Happy New Year everybody, hope you're well. In this video we're going to talk about dealing with estate agents, okay? There's so much videos out there, I've done hundreds of videos on rates and products and mortgages and bits and pieces. One of the most important bits that people do not concentrate on uh, is how you deal with property agents and estate agents and, and the things you must do to win. You are going against other people to try to secure property. So let's look at that. Let's look at the the negotiation behind purchasing a property and dealing with the agents and dealing with brokers and how brokers can help you deal with agents and having the information out there to make sure that they are positioning you in the best light for securing that property to the vendors. All right? So let's talk about that. Certainly this this time of the year, we get a lot of inquiries for people saying, look, I'm going to look to buy towards the end of the year. I'm going to buy in July. I'm going to buy in October. I'm going to buy in towards the end of the year. What do I need to do to possibly get me in the best possible shape for a mortgage? Well, the first things to do is look at your finances. Use your stuff. Guys, I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs, right? But reducing monthly cost and negotiations on your income is vital. So when April comes around, if you are doing negotiation on April, forget about bonus, forget about commission. Try to go for the basic. Basic always helps. Basic is 100% from day one. Overtime, commission, bonuses, annually, quarterly, all of that gets messy, right? Because some lenders will want to see a track record. Some lenders will take an average of the last two years. So all of that stuff, try to go for the basic. First, rule number one. Rule number two, childcare costs. Let's deal with the childcare costs, right? There are some lenders that will ignore childcare costs if it's going to come off the books in the next six months. So take that into account. Are you going to get your 15 hours? Are you going to get your 30 hours? Have you signed that up? Can we say track record? That stuff needs to be sorted out. If you've got kids, childcare, child benefit, all of that sort of stuff needs to be taken care of. Get yourself planned. Reduce childcare costs if you can okay because it goes it hammers affordability absolutely hammers affordability i'm going to do a whole video on childcare and the useless criteria that are around childcare costs by some of the lenders but i will give you some pointers around that so childcare costs discuss it with your mortgage broker discuss it with yourself so really important discuss it with yourself well Discuss it with your partner, I suppose, about childcare costs and how you can look to reduce that, how lenders see it. Doing your research now, speaking to a broker and planning ahead, these are the things you need to plan on, right? Pension contributions, um, don't worry about it so much. A lot of the lenders ignore it, okay? But other costs, okay? Gym membership, private medical insurance, things like that. I'm not saying get, start cancelling your private medical insurance. But just have a discussion. If you're discussing with a broker, go. Don't just talk about salaries, okay? Look beyond that, okay? Use us. Use mortgage brokers in the right way, okay? Use us. But build relationships. Don't just use mortgage broker. Speak to this broker. Speak to that broker. I hate that type of clients. I'm definitely not that broker, okay? So if that's what you want to do, don't phone me, right? But you can use mortgage brokers in a really good, positive way and build relationships because they will help you longer term, okay? Um, now, dealing with agents uh, is my another point. Oh, dealing with agents. Let me tell you a story. When we set up the business, uh, going back 15 odd years ago, um, I said to Richard, my business partner, I said, Richard, I know I had a couple of properties anyway. I knew a lo load of agents. My background was I did some financing in estate agencies and stuff like that in the past from a corporate perspective, not being a broker. So I said, I know that market. Let me go and approach some of these estate agents. I'm sure we can get business out of them. You know, we, we, we're genuine people. We can deal with people. Um, and sure enough, I went and signed up a load of estate agencies. So we were their preferred broker. Okay. And I'll tell you what, within a couple of months, we soon learned that that's not a relationship we want to have. We want to have direct relationship with our clients. Dealing with agents are they are an absolute nightmare and one of the best decisions i've ever made was not to be reliant on an estate agent right um and there are some good ones there are some bad ones don't get me wrong guys there are some wonderful estate agents out there but it's just not my it's not the way we did our business now you 
as buyers, we'll have to deal with them. Sorry, you have to deal with agents. And what's worse than a estate agent is those property developers, okay? The agents that, not they're not estate agents, they're property developer guys, okay? Honestly, guys, they are um, really, really, really hard work to deal with, okay? So be get yourselves prepared. You're going to be sold to. They are really pushy. They are a bit cheesy, in all honesty. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, um, but um, I find them quite cheesy to deal with. Right. But there is a way you can deal with them on your own terms. And the way you deal with them is, let me tell you the two different type of clients. Bearing in mind, when you are looking to buy a property, you are looking, you are going against others. It's a competitive market. You either have got more money than everybody else, or you're in a better position than everybody else. There's got to be a reason why that seller will accept your offer rather than 10 other offers. And yes, maybe it's not 30 other offers anymore, but it's still a few more people that you're going against. So you're either offering the most or you're giving them something else. Okay. Now, in this market, what the vendors want to know is assurances that the deal will go through. If you agree a deal, if you shake hands with somebody, it's not old school shake hands, but if you agree a deal, they want you to follow through. They don't want problems. They don't want to hear that, oh, sorry, I can't get finance. Oh, sorry, I couldn't sell my property. Oh, sorry, this happens. Oh, sorry, that happens. They don't want to hear that, okay? So, you either going to go and offer them the most, which most people don't want to, or you've got to do something else. And let's talk about that something else, okay? I've got two clients. Client number one walks into the estate agent and says, oh, I'm looking to buy a property for 350K. Yeah, I've just started uh, my research. I'm at my, you know, I've just started. Um, haven't got a lot of things sorted out, but you know, this is the sort of price range I'm looking at and this is my situation and let me know what you can do. So that's client number one. Client number two, let's say it's you, okay? Client number two walks in, see the estate agent and says, right, I've seen a property for 350, okay? Here's my agreement principle for 350 or 360 even. Here's my proof of deposit. And by the way, this agreement and principle is done by a broker. Here's my broker's details. Now, what's the difference by an agreement and principle that's been done by a broker than an agreement and principle that you've got yourself from one of those YouTube adverts that you can see rolling around right now, get an agreement and principle in 10 minutes. Oh, you can get an agreement principle in three minutes, okay? What's the difference? The difference between an agreement principle by a broker is the broker would have checked, hopefully if they'd done their job, your bank statements, okay? So they would have checked your incomings and outgoings, any other things that have not been associated. The broker hopefully would have checked the property type, okay? You can't check that on a, no system's going to check, you know, whether it's got a commercial underneath it, whether it's a deck access, whether it's got uh, commercial property under, uh, underneath it, whether it's something next to it, how many floors are on the property, what type of construction there is. They're not going to check any of that, right? They're not going to check your incomings and outgoings properly, right? They're not going to check your pay slips properly. You would have rounded up your salary. Well, what is it actually? You would have rounded up your commission. What was the average for the last three months? You wouldn't have not maybe disclosed... Uh, some of the things that get disclosed on, on, on systems, okay? Uh, you might have not disclosed all your loans, all your credit card balances. Do you know what? If you've got an agreement in principle from a lender that didn't, you know, takes into account, regardless of whether you're going to pay your loans off of your credit cards monthly, if it's showing on your credit report, it's seen as an affordability issue. Now, you didn't know that. You're saying, well, actually, I'll clear that balance every month, or my loan will be cleared in the next two months. You say, tough, tough. So, Remember, what they want is assurances, right? That you will do it, okay? Now, so you give an agreement principle. Here's my broker details. Here's my agreement principle. Here's my proof of deposit. By the way, my brokers checked that out as well. Here's my proof of deposit. Here's my solicitor details. Now, we as brokers, we always recommend uh, various solicitors, um, generally because we check the solicitors that are on the lender panel, service levels, and so forth. So we do that for our clients. So our client... I don't get paid, I don't get anything until my client buys. It's my incentive for my client to be better than anyone else's clients. Whatever I can do to make them win is going to be better for me as a business. Okay? So, and 
So you, they, you're going against that person. You will win. You will win that because you're better prepared. Stajan looks at it, instantly says, this guy's done his homework. He's down the line. This other person's not reg not, not regular. Now, the estate agents, what they do is, and this is horrible. I hate I doing this, but what they'll go is, oh, I can see you've got an agreement principle, but you need to speak to our broker. Do you know why? Because they get a back end there. There's a referral fee from, from their brokerage. Okay. Um, now, it could be an in-house broker or it could be an external broker, but do you want the people that you're buying from, essentially the estate agent, you're buying from them. They don't work for you, they work for the seller, knowing what your finances are, knowing your ins and outs, knowing if there's a change, knowing if there's a problem, okay? Now, it's their incentives to know, but is it, your, is it to your benefit to have an independent broker sitting away from this transaction, dealing with you, having your interest at heart or the agent's broker think about that okay so when you're dealing with an estate agent don't be short-sighted okay don't be bullied and pushed into certain sales tactics you have to use our broker we have to find out if you're financially stable it is i am financially stable i can afford it here's my groom principal here's my bank statement. here's my here's my stuff here's my pay slips here's my income it comes up so don't be pushed into it because unfortunately what happens is people get pushed into it they go and deal with these treadmill systems out there or brokers or setups where you know they don't necessarily have the relationship the insight into that client and what happens the case gets rejected so dealing with estate agents in the right way it, having them to deal with them in your own term will enable them to be on your side okay it enables them to have confidence when you are going to offer £10,000 less to have that discussion and go, do you know what? I know they're offering 10 k less. However, these guys are good for it. Maybe they don't have a chain. Maybe they've already sold their property. Maybe their broker's already refinanced it. Here's the mortgage offer for the refinance. They've got their money. You, it's your job. My job is to tell you how we go about this from a finance perspective but it's your job to sell yourself selling yourself is the most important thing to that estate agent okay not being sold to loads of these estate agents there they will essentially try to control the narrative okay no this is not this is a buyer's market you are a buyer it's your market okay it's not a seller's market that time's passed it's a buyer's market okay buyer's market which means you are in charge okay and you've got to but it doesn't mean that you can't be this you, you can be disorganized you can be uh, laxed about the process okay you need to be quite firm knowing what you want knowing what you've got and what you can gain and actually deal with them in that way and that's what i believe genuinely believe the most of my clients the successful clients a lot of the landlords that i deal with and a lot of the people that i've i've helped multiple properties with that's what they've got on their side one they've got someone like us other brokers out there that's on their side in terms of helping them navigate through the financial side of things but also having the um the insight uh, and, and really being um professional enough to deal with these estate agents in a right manner so um uh, hopefully you found this useful guys um, there is so much to be said I'm actually excited for this year because what this year means is the good brokers are going to earn their money um, the good people in any industry okay when times have changed um, any industry this is the time to really earn your money this is the time to actually build relationships with a lot of the relationships and the clients that I we got myself and Richard and now the company's grown but the the relationships that we built after the last crash many of those clients are still really good clients of mine many of them I've got they've done very well out of our relationship because you know they've bought multiple properties and have moved on with their lives but we were there to help them in the hour of need okay and that's the type of client I want um, anyway guys um, I'll hopefully I'll see you a lot more hopefully these videos will get a little bit more regular because our YouTube numbers have actually tumbled because I haven't been doing any videos and I thought it's about time for me to uh, blabble on on this video if you have enjoyed it please do like and subscribe and share it with anybody that you think 
would be interested in this video. Take care, all the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.